Hello everyone, Beata here and welcome to season two of Fibers and Fabrics. If you're a new watcher, very welcome to you as well. In season one of Fibers and Fabrics, we had a look at polyester, nylon, spandex, also known as elastine or lycra, and acrylic. In today's episode, we'll be looking at synthetic fibers as a group, and we'll be looking at how it's made, what is the environmental impact, and is it really a good textile going forward? So let's get going. plants or animals. While semi-synthetic fibers are made from the compounds with one of the ingredients being plants. Synthetic fibers are made by humans through chemical synthesis as opposed to natural fibers that are directly derived from living organisms. Synthetic fibers are the result of scientists extensively researching on how to improve natural fibers or at least to try and improve them or get a way of producing something similar that is much cheaper. The starting point for most synthetic fibers is a liquid form of either coal, oil or natural gas. The liquid derived from these resources gets pushed through a device called a spinneret. A spinneret looks a little bit like a shower head with small little holes at the bottom. So think of it upside down. The liquid gets pushed through and through these holes, little filaments are formed. The filaments are cooled down immediately to try and form a type of a yarn. So in other words, the device takes these tiny little polymers to form a fiber. These threads are then woven together to create a fabric. When any garment is washed, micro pieces of that garment breaks off and goes into the water supply. In the case of synthetic fibers, this also happens. But because it's very much like a plastic, micro pieces of plastic enter our water supply. One of the episodes in season two will be dedicated towards microplastic waste. I will have it linked down below once it's ready. All things fake in the world of textiles are created by using synthetic fibers and fabrics. An example of this is vegan leather leggings or faux fur. No wonder a fake attitude is called being plastic. The textile industry began creating synthetic fibers as a cheaper and more easily mass-produced alternative to natural fibers. Nylon clothes and similar products are made from strands of plastic yarn. They are made by melting nylon chips that once liquefy are forced through the fine holes of a nozzle called a spinneret. As the liquid emerges from the holes, it is cooled down so that it solidifies to form tiny little threads. These threads are then woven together to make fabric. If you'd like more examples of synthetic fibers, I encourage you to go and have a look at the videos I've mentioned earlier. I don't like synthetic fibers and I think it comes as no surprise, especially if you've watched some of the episodes in season one. But this series won't be complete without me acknowledging the benefits or the pros that these synthetic fibers have. So let's give them our best go. Synthetic fibers are incredibly great at retaining the shape of the fabric or the original shape of the garment. What does that mean? When we as humans wear clothing, we obviously move around and we bend. Three of the areas that are impacted the most is our elbows, our bums, and our knees. This is where most of the movement happens inside of the clothing. As we move, the garments in those areas will get stretched out. Synthetic fibers helps the fabric to go back and almost shrink back into its original shape. Without this benefit, we will end up with baggy and saggy knees, bums, and elbows. A way of forcing natural fibers to do this is to emerge it into water and wash it. 
That way the fibers will also pull back into its original shape. But with synthetic fibers, we don't always have to wash it in order for it to pull back. It does that by itself. Another benefit of synthetic fabrics is that it can last a really long time when you take care of it extremely well. What is the reason for this? As mentioned, synthetic fibers can be compared to a plastic. So think about the difference, right? If you leave a plastic bottle outside in your garden and you leave an apple peel outside in your garden and you leave it for a month and you come back, what are you gonna find? You're still gonna find the plastic bottle the way it was, but the apple peel will be gone. The reason for that is it breaks down a lot quicker, natural fibers that, that is. Synthetic fibers don't break down that easily. And the same happens when wearing it. When you wear it, wash it, move in it, it doesn't break down that easily. Where natural fibers can. The second benefit. It can last extremely long when you take good care of it. And the reason for that is because it is a type of a plastic, it doesn't break down that easily. So when you wear it, wash it, move around in it, it won't break off that easily. The negative side of that is, of course, when it's discarded, it also won't break down as easily. It's not gonna change all of a sudden meaning that it will take hundreds, even thousands of years for it to break down and return back into the soil. But that also translates into garments looking more pristine for a longer period of time. Synthetic fibers have stretch. Of course, it varies from one fiber to the next, but overall, they have great stretch. And stretch is loved for a number of reasons, by the consumer as well as the manufacturer. Consumers love it because it creates comfort. You can easily move in it, stretch in it, um, sit in it, stand in it, exercise in it. It doesn't restrict any of the movements you have and it moves with your body. That is why stretchy clothing is so extremely comfortable for consumers. In addition to that, if you want something extremely tight fitting, especially when it comes to your legs, in your bum, you will need stretch in order to get into that garment. Something like this, which is quite body hugging, is easy to get in because there's a long zipper at the back and this doesn't have stretch at all. But when it comes to trousers, you will need stretch in order to get in if you want a skinny, tight fitting pant. Producers or manufacturers of clothing also love stretch, but for a different reason. It accommodates more body sizes and body shapes. In my garment construction classes this year, I've just seen how incredibly weird and also cool we are put together. And all of us have our own unique shape and size. In order for us to find the perfect fit can be quite exhausting. For example, I have quite broad shoulders in comparison to having a very small bust. My crutch to waist ratio is about 33% longer than most women my size. And I also have very long legs, which means all of my dresses can look very short. Having a large array of sizes to accommodate each body type is basically impossible for producers because it's extremely expensive to produce the same item of clothing in different loads of different sizes, different colors, and then having different designs. It is much easier to only have a small, medium, large. The benefit of stretchy clothing is that you can fit more body types into the same garment and everyone will still feel comfortable because we've mentioned it's gonna be comfortable and it's gonna fit in a lot more individuals. Therefore, allowing a lot of unique body shapes and sizes to fit into a smaller amount of sizes available. Another reason why brands, manufacturers, and producers of clothing love synthetic fibers is because it is sometimes associated with a higher quality item. But why is that? Because we've mentioned that it doesn't break down as quickly and will return back to its original shape, we as consumers want that. We want things to look new and fresh all of the time. And because synthetic fibers offer those benefits, it can be associated with a higher quality item. In addition to that, when you buy a pair of, say, yoga pants, 
and you can wear it for two, three years without your bum shining through at the back. And we've all seen that in the gym. It just looks awful. If you don't have that happening with an old pair of nylon leggings, it's great. And you as consumer will go back to that brand and buy from them again. You don't want the fabric to become all thin around your backside. You will associate that with a low quality item. And therefore producers can produce more clothing in synthetic fibers in order to give consumers a more pristine looking item over a longer period of time. Synthetics is a cheap way to strengthen the textile. If you still don't see a difference between a natural and a synthetic fiber, look at the landfills and look what you can see that remains in the landfill. It's all of the plastics, right? Another example to think of the difference is, imagine a nice wooden fire inside of a cottage. The scent of a natural item such as wood burning creates a cozy atmosphere. But if somebody throws in a plastic bottle or bag, the entire house or area is gonna ex smell extremely bad and you'll probably have to run to an open window. Although they might seem the same on the surface, they are extremely different in the way they are made, in the way they are worn, and the way they act when being disposed of. If we really want less synthetic clothing, we should also make a commitment to use less plastic overall. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode on synthetic fibers and that it will probably get you thinking about buying a little bit more natural or semi-synthetic fibers. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Have a lovely day. Bye everyone.